Hey, old woodlanders. Welcome in to another wet woodlog. The last couple of weeks have been a little bit of a challenge for me. I actually think this wet winter has finally broke me. <laughs> so I haven't done a great deal of filming. Um, I've been alone in my thoughts. There's some days I just have no motivation whatsoever. There's a little extract just here. And I am really struggling with motivation today. So I'm meant to be felling trees today. And I really can't be bothered with that. I'm going to have an hour and a half of brush cutting, some bramble. And I think it'll just make me feel better knowing that I've done one job. Occasionally I get days like this, they don't happen very often. Difficult to explain why you don't have any desires or motivations at all. Yes, I may not even include this in the wood log, I just needed to express it to a camera. I've been just about here, there and everywhere, doing jobs for other people, fitting gates, fitting even more gates, sorting some panels out that got fitted upside down by the landscaper, which made me smile. I've finished cutting this hazel coppice. You may have actually seen that already. And I've just been bundling up and we're going to extract the last couple of bundles out. I just tried to take them up on the, on the mule, but the ground is so boggy, I can't even get grip with my shoes. So what I'm going to do is just tuck them underneath the pines just round here, out in the shade. And then the next job in this little bit as a final job is this big triple leading pine tree just here. I want to try and fell over there. But I think that larch there is going to hold me up. So I may have to go and get my pole pruning things to take off some of these larger limbs. comes out these fluffy little shoots they're all soft they're not even needles they're like soft little bristles it's lovely stunning that I'm struggling for time really and I think that's what finally got to me the other day was like I've got so much to do I mustn't complain it's all money and turnover, eh? Anyway, how are you? I hope your week has gone a little bit better than my week. Well, the other night I got home from work and I was so exhausted, I just thought, I'm going to go to bed. And I just had my tea and I went to bed because I was just wrecked. Which I think did me some good because after a couple of three days of doing that, I'm, I'm all right. I get back up to where I belong, back in front of the camera, and just saying utter nonsense in front of it. <laughs> Down there somewhere, you might be able to see a white thing, and that's a Malibu bottle. Littering my own woodland is not a good sign, is it? I think I must have had something called videographer's block. A bit like writer's block. Couldn't think of anything to say in front of the camera. I've got all these ideas in my mind, but like, Oh, not today. I don't, I don't want to do that today. These have got to go up to the top end. This will get converted into charcoal. As with a couple of little piles, we'll move them out of the way. This area of hazel here got coppiced a couple of weeks ago. I was going to take out this pine tree here but what I'm going to do is get my pole pruners again prune off some of those branches up here just a little bit give it a bit of a high prune so rather than hacking it off I think that might be all right to kind of create almost a um, Scots pine standard in the middle kind of an orangey scaly bark whereas Corsican pine has very much more a black bark they call it the black pine so I'm, I'm assuming that's the Scots I made another little dead edge the other day as well look proper one with stakes and everything 
I was well impressed. And in other news, I'm gonna show you that. And finally, the leg of my tripod has snapped off. Which means I've got to decide what I'm doing. So I've got another tripod that I use, but it hasn't got flexible legs, because this has got flexible legs, which means I could wrap it around the trees. Whereas the other tripod I bought is more of a, just a mini tabletop tripod. The quandaries, eh? So it means I might have to spend another 20 quid to get myself a new tripod with flexi legs. The sacrifices I make to create videos for you guys. I always seem to trap my fingers in this thing. I'm not doing very well with it. I hope to have me a silky extendable pole saw, eh? I definitely need a silky. Oh, look at that. Look at that leaf there, look. Oh, that'd have been great in slow man. Let's see what mess I can make of this one. That was awesome. Morning. Surprise, surprise. It's raining again. I was going to be doing some um, hand extraction of the ash to get it off the chestnut coppice so that the chestnut can happily grow to its heart's content without some ash pole and brash making life difficult. Oh, looks like have some wind up here. I've got to do just a little bit more brush cutting just to get that under control and then we can put that to bed for this year. It's not very entertaining watching brush cutting. I might do a little bit of music and some time lapse and then I'll give you an update once I've done that. One thing that did happen a couple of weeks ago, Ellie Ray and I came up to pick up some stuff. We met this chap, what's he up to? He says, I wondered if you could help me. He says, can you pull me out and drop the whole of the back end of the car in the ditch? Been there the whole night trying to get himself out. He was absolutely plastered in mud. So we got him out. He'd been there about 14 hours. One of the neighboring farms he'd been to to try and get help and they couldn't actually help him. He went back there for his breakfast. So I was glad about that. Apparently I'd saved his life. I, I don't know how he thought that, but. He were crying and he were in a right state. But I just felt so sorry for this guy. Anyway, we just did our best to try and help him and, and I'm sure anybody would have done exactly the same. I'm gone into waffle mode again. Almost done. One last little patch up through here, and then I got to disappear. Not literally, just pop off to the log man. A lone daffodil. Ooh, look at the hazel on that. In there was some ash coppice with a bit of rowan in there, and rowan in this woodland doesn't do well at all. There's some cherries, you might just be able to see the blossom. They haven't done very well at all. I mean, we're looking at a woodland that's 25 years old. Some of them are barely like four inches round. Anyway, we digress. We'll tuck into that. Well, that's a shame. The brush cutter is very poorly. It'll run for about a minute and then it just dies. It bogs down. That's a shame because I've got all that still to knock off all up there and I can't get to it now. So, that will have to go in the workshop and we'll try and get that prepared. Mm -hmm. 
Come on in. <laughs> Just get Yeah. Wasn't meant to drop that. I think I may have figured out the brush cutter problem. And I reckon it's all to do with, I'm getting to the point in a minute, just navigating the mud. I think it's all to do with the fuel filter. It's like this little tube. I took that out, blew through the filter, and you've still got this fine mesh gauze on the outside. So I'm gonna give it a whirl this morning. I'm hoping that was it, because it does feel like pure starvation. you a few gems you may be fed up with me going on about knocking bramble out and how annoying it is and I wanted to show you some of the positive side to leaving bramble in and what can happen you may notice a few sticks that I've left behind and sadly there was a few casualties some had to take the hit for their friends the brush cutter just slipped and nip the little legs off so we've got some oak self-set and we've got some hazel self-set silver birch and then somewhere in here tucked away here we go let me just find this way through the debris we have a self-set larch look at that i thought it was a hawthorn when i saw it could with it being green on it and i'm like no way that's a self-set larch that's absolutely fantastic so I'm really chuffed to bits that that's growing nicely. So that shows you some of the highlights of um, not getting in with the brush cutter and just leaving things as they are. So we've got self-set oaks, which I like that. So it's not all about me destroying bramble because what it does, it acts like a barbed wire fence and keeps the, um, the little nibblers out. I got no idea there was as many trees as this in here. That was an ash stool. But as you can see, they are absolutely brown bread. There's nothing left. I'm just letting nature do what it does with these. Let them fall over. They're not casting any real shade on the trees below. And maybe there's some sort of environmental conservation benefit to the dead wood that's still standing. And I don't know whether woodpeckers tend to go after that kind of thing. This was just bramble that was about 10 foot high and I managed to borrow a big JCB front end loader from where I used to work. Which what it did, it squashed it and knocked all the bramble heads off. So they basically mulched them down and then they got the power harrow in and then just went up and hand sowed a wildflower meadow and grass. So it doesn't look much at the minute, but there's some lovely flowers in here in the summer. be pleased to know <coughs> brush cutter runs as good as it's ever run which is awesome who needs fuel filters anyway just running another little experiment with uh, charcoal my first experiment I did in this tin and I put it straight in the dragon at the side of the barrel. Now I think it got too hot, but it was really fragile, it just basically shattered. So this lot I've peeled it, which is slightly different because the other ones I didn't peel. And I'm going to put it inside the barrel. And I'm hoping then it's not as fierce on the heat. Fairly productive afternoon so far. Bagged up all the charcoal. Got a load more bagged up. Just over there under the shelter. And now I'm just gonna get some timber tongs and we will get the timber, try and get some of that ash off those stools down the bottom end. And back onto some hazel hurdles then, because I've got another order. I was complaining on the last video that we've got no orders in. Well, that day we had an order for seven panels, which was great. It's sort of inquiry in the morning, by the afternoon, orders confirmed. So, well happy about that. 
little mushrooms. A bit more done. Still some buried underneath all that pine brush. Tomorrow's a bit of a garden job and then I've got to do a little hedge cut for Carol. I don't tend to feature many tools that I use and I thought we could have a Tool Tuesday. This week's Tool Tuesday is my timber tongs. These are made by Husqvarna. I think these are the smallest ones. That one's still got a label on it. One of them says L-Y-F-T-S-A-X. It's a lot of flights today, which is ruining my voiceover. The first pair, which is the top pair, I bought when I first started forestry, which is 20 years ago, and they're still going strong. They're one of those tools that just gets terribly abused, and they've been brilliant. No bends, no breaks, fantastic. So I bought myself a second set from an APF about four years ago, and two is definitely better than one. But they're great because you just hook in, they very rarely slip. I've no idea how they compare to the steel ones if they do them, but I like these and I think the next APF I'm going to try and find the next size up. I'm pretty sure these are the smallest, which is ideal for first the ends up to about 8 to 10 inches and then they start to struggle. Tool Tip Tuesday. Husqvarna Timber Tongs. I have bought others and they weren't very good and one day I think I'll do a comparison test but for now that's it. Tool Chip Tuesday. Try saying that fast. Just planted a couple of trees that I grew from seed, a couple of acorns and a couple of maples. That's me done for today. I'll see you tomorrow. We're in a mad rush to try and load up the charcoal before the next deluge of water comes. I think we're going to have to put them in the middle, on top. The woodland was just drying up as well. And now it's absolutely underwater again, isn't it? There's a puddle there that's just down there where the tarps are. There's a massive puddle and we've just planted a tree there. I know. So it's just going to get submerged in the water. This one of our sponsors. Have you made a video on this yet? About what? This. Oh yeah, done that. You've oh. not watched it? <laughs> what? She doesn't watch my videos. <laughs> What's that about? No, I thought, right, I did watch it. I just momentarily forgot. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> If you haven't already, go watch that video. Excellent, what an excellent suggestion. Are you still recording? Out. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> edit all that nonsense out. I record. Did you hear that, guys? He's a genius. So we've got a bit of paracord holding things down. The challenge I've got is when it rains, it pours in the corner. That's the only trouble. That is a good sunset, that is. Well, today was a bit of a jobby. I was just going up here, so up this lane, where all the muddy puddles are. Um, he caught a lock on his van, so you know that alarm when you get, you know, when you lock yourself in the car and you move about a lot. Um, so that, from the house to the woodland, that was going off and we couldn't stop it. He pulled the key out like three times and it was just like non-stop. And he put, you know, his famous hat on, he put it over this thing, it's like a sensor I guess, and that still wasn't working. I was meant to be doing this, it's about 3 o'clock this afternoon and it's now 20 past 6. Flipping heck! <laughs> so, uh, yes, we're three hours behind. Well, at least we've done it now. We've done it now, it's not rained, it's not dark. No. It's actually only bonus. Well, it has rained, hasn't it? See you guys tomorrow. crazy afternoon I've had. We've been dropping off barbecue charcoal and then hooking up to Hartwood's HQ 
and you've just got a little batch of charcoal and sacks ready for bag milk coffee. And then I'll chat with Kev and there could be some really positive news on the bio charcoal on a national scale. Right, just got to get this unloaded now. I'm just going to take me what seems going to be gone forever because I've got to carry all the bags right down there, which is 60, 80 yards away. We need a month of dry weather, and that's not bad. not believe how much easier it is with our copy sparrow. Proper coming to its own today again. Brilliant. I'm so glad I built that. If you've not watched the video yet, by all means check out the back catalogue of me making this coppice workers wheelbarrow. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Morning. Welcome to another wet woodland day. Possibly the worst I've seen it. We've got our dragon going this morning and then I'm off to make some dead hedging down the bottom end. It'd be nice just to have an experiment with dead hedging. Everyone tells me how wonderful it is and I like the idea of its conservation part and to tidy up a brush pile that ordinarily just looks like carnage. Trust me when I say that it really is a lovely blue sky day. to dead edging. We did this at college years ago and we just all I've done is bash some stakes in which is a few bits of hazel offcuts and then trying to trim the brush out so it's not all sticky outy and that's it really. If you've got any other advice on making a dead edge by all means share it in the comments. Ideally this would be used for faggots or fascine making, only I have no orders for that, I can't seem to establish any orders for that, and I can't get a good quantity of fairly straightish lop and top fascines or faggots, which is six foot long, round, about a foot round, um, bundled up brash and rods. And then you sell it for river bank restoration and revetment work, which I think is fantastic. And what happens is, I'm no expert on this bit either, but uh, you peg back these fascines into the embankment because it's been washed away by water on a, on a bend or something. You peg it back and what happens is, is uh, on that bend then the silt and the fish and goodness knows what else kind of embed themselves in this state brash pile and which eventually rots away but by the time that rots away it's established the bank again is re-established with silt and oftentimes you get vegetation that starts to grow in it which re-establishes the embankment and stops it from eroding away which I think is brilliant Well, for a first attempt, that doesn't look too bad, does it? Check on the charcoal, have a quick drink, and then I'm gonna off down the bottom end then to do some dead edging down there.
you know what? I'm just sick of getting wet. So I'm gonna call it a day. I know we've got blue skies coming. But I've had enough. I'm not soaked yet, but I don't wanna be. <laughs> how the sun comes through with the rain. I know I don't like rain, but I did look rather pretty. So if you're able to, try and avoid the showers. Enjoy the spring. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I don't often say this. If you fancy subscribing, please do. Like the video. All that jazz. And I'll see you soon. Can you hear the skylark? They're amazing because I can hear it so clear, but I cannot see it. <laughs>